House of the Dragon is going to be jumping back and forth in time to add some context on why the Targaryen family hates each other. But I don't think two past eras are enough to get viewers up to speed. George Martin has written a crazy amount of lore surrounding a major event called the Dance of the Dragons. So much so that I have to make a video so the timeline is more digestible. Last we left off in the books, the Game of Thrones story is taking place in 300 AC. The Dance of the Dragons kicks off in 129 AC, so we're going back 107 years in the past. But we also see a younger version of the main characters in House of the Dragon, so there will be at least two time periods that the prequel will be covering. See, this is 32 year old Rhaenyra Targaryen, and this is 7 year old Rhaenyra. So expect 25 year flashbacks within the prequel. But there's so much story needed to be told before Rhaenyra was even born and up until she decides to fight for her father's throne. If you're going into House of the Dragon Blind, I'll do my best to avoid big spoilers. I'm going to start this timeline off in 100 AC. Some of you more hardcore book fans might be looking at me weird right now for this choice because it wasn't a very lively year, but one major event that is very important did occur. The death of the good queen Alysanne Targaryen, Rhaenyra's great-grandmother. She helped her brother slash husband, the old King Jaehaerys, rule for over 50 years. He's considered the best ever king of the Seven Kingdoms, and she's a vital part of that reign. I'm starting with her death because that's when Alicent Hightower enters the picture. She'll be a rival or antagonist to Rhaenyra Targaryen in a few years. But for now, she's just an innocent child accompanying her father to serve at court. A new hand of the king was needed since the son and heir to the old King Jaehaerys died soon after his mother Alicent. Alicent's father, Otto Hightower, took care of the realm while his daughter nursed the king during his time of mourning and failing health. In 101 AC, the first great council was held. The number of Targaryens within the house was growing, and the line of succession was getting a little messy. But before Jaehaerys would join his wife and son in the afterlife, he had to select an heir that the other lords would be cool with if the transition of power was going to go down peacefully. The main two claims to the throne were two of Jaehaerys' grandchildren. The stronger claim being a granddaughter since she comes from the line of an elder son. But the voters in the great council were not going to elect a female to sit on the iron throne and rule over them all. So the grandson Viserys was chosen, Rhaenyra's father. An important precedent was set here. It was a common custom to pass on the female line even if she was born first. But now it's just official. 102 AC was a quiet year with the old king's health continuing to decline and Alicent continuing to care for him. The king's grip on reality was fading with his age too. He would confuse Alicent with his own daughter who he hadn't seen in ages. Then in 103 AC, Jaehaerys finally died while Alicent was reading to him, but the peace he built resumed. Viserys was now king, the first to sit on the Iron Throne without a dragon, because his bonded beast died a few years back after a long and violent life. Viserys barely got the chance to ride on his dragon Beleriand, who once belonged to Aegon the Conqueror. It was the largest known dragon, but no longer had much strength in him. Viserys named his younger brother, Daemon, as his master of coin. Daemon only held this position for a very short period of time before changing roles as the master of laws for an even shorter period of time. Seats on the small council bored him, plus Otto Hightower, still had the king, wanted him gone, far away from any real responsibility. Both of these men were power hungry, but while Otto was competent, Daemon was just dangerous. So instead of a seat on the small council, Prince Daemon took over as the commander of King's Landing City Watch, essentially a police chief. Daemon was calling himself the Prince of the City, carrying himself as if he were the heir to the Iron Throne, which he technically was at this time, since his brother Viserys only had a young daughter with his wife, Queen Aima Arryn. The two, King and Queen, had a lot of trouble with childbirth, so their kid Rhaenyra was all they had, though they never stopped trying for a son. In 104 AC, the City Watch earned the nickname of the Gold Cloaks thanks to Daemon. He gave each man a golden colored cloak and new weapons to patrol the streets. His men loved him and he commanded well. A tourney was held in a prominent town in the Riverlands called Maidenpool to celebrate Viserys' coronation. During this tourney, a young knight named Sir Criston Cole made a name for himself by beating Prince Daemon and all the other contenders in a melee, then went on to beat Daemon again in the tilts before being unhorsed himself by the champion. Seven-year-old Rhaenyra was in attendance and enamored by Kristen when he asked for her favor in the jousts. Rhaenyra was quickly becoming a favorite of all the people herself, with many calling her the realm's delight. She had the courage to tame a dragon of her own at the age of seven, exceptionally early to attempt a flight. One of the youngest Targaryens to do it, if not the youngest. She would be the first to ride the dragon Serax, a name Rhaenyra gave it. 
In 105 AC, it was announced that Queen Emma was once again pregnant, but she would die during the child's birth, and the baby boy died the next day. Prince Damon drunkenly joked that he was the heir for a day, a joke that reached the Viserys' ears. For the first time ever, the pushover that Viserys was punished his younger brother in his rage after getting that report. The punishment being Rhaenyra being declared his heir instead of Daemon. Daemon in return left his position as commander of the City Watch after only a year and flew atop his dragon with his mistress to Dragonstone. Every lord was made to swear to honor Rhaenyra's right to the throne, but Daemon is not in attendance, straining the relationship between the brothers. Things become worse when King Viserys orders Daemon to return the dragon egg he gifted his pregnant mistress and return to his wife in the Vale the wife he had no interest in being with. In 106 AC, Viserys would remarry. His new queen, the daughter of his hand, Otto Hightower. Alicent Hightower had been at court since she was a girl nursing the old king, and now she was a queen. Eventually, after spending the year with his wife in the Vale, Damon lost his patience and left her once again without the king's leave, this time to start a war campaign on some contested land between Westeros and Essos called the Stepstones. Damon would fight on his dragon in Caraxes, with the support of the experienced sea captain and lord, Corlys Valerion, the Targaryen's close ally. Actions like this is how Damon earned the nickname of the Rogue Prince. By 107 AC, the king and his new wife had a child, this time a son, but King Viserys was adamant on his daughter still being the heir. In 109 AC, another child for Viserys and Alicent, a daughter they would name Helena. The Hand, Otto Hightower, tried to persuade the king to now declare his son the true heir, wanting to see his own grandson stay on the Iron Throne one day and elevate his family. While well, Otto persisted one too many times, because also in 109 AC, he was stripped of his title as Hand and he went home back to the Reach. Otto's status was heading downward, while the rogue prince finally completed his conquest and crowned as the King of the Stepstones. In 110 AC, another son for Viserys and Alicent, Aemon the Targaryen. The next year unofficially formed the two factions of the Targaryens that would be at war with each other 20 more years down the line. Many gathered for a tourney. Noble supporters flocked around the princess or the queen. Rhaenyra wore black, so her supporters were then on referred to as the Blacks. Alicent, green, so her side was named the Greens, a color associated with the Reach. A true divide was forming in King's Landing. And just then, Prince Damon returned to the city from his small kingdom to ask forgiveness from his brother and bring in more trouble for the realm. He grew tired of the Stepstones and offered his crown to Viserys as a sign of fealty. His brother, who could not deny neither Damon or Rhaenyra, welcomed him back. But after another unknown fight, Damon was exiled again after six months. So he returned to his bleak kingdom. I hope this isn't too overwhelming to fit in a short video. Even I sometimes forget how detailed these years were thanks to the lore book Fire and Blood. By 113 AC, Rhaenyra was now 16 years old and took Dragonstone as her seat, customary for an heir to the throne. Many powerful men hoped to win her hand in marriage, but her father ordered her to marry her relative, Lenor Valerion, something she didn't agree with since he was known to prefer the company of men. But Lenor was Lord Corlys Valerion's son, and he was the richest man in the realm at the time who had a powerful fleet. The newlyweds didn't spend much time together, however, but miraculously, the very next year, their firstborn son, Jaceres Valerion, was born. Then another boy, the following year, named Lucerys. This year, 115 AC, saw the rogue prince doing what he does best, cause trouble. Ever since Rhaenyra was named heir, Damon eyed Rhaenyra as a possible mate, but his wife stood in the way of that. Well, in 115 AC, while he was fighting back invaders and the Stepstones, his wife fell off her horse in the Vale and died. The first thing he did was leave his shitty islands to try and claim her castle. But the Lords of the Vale quickly rejected him. If he couldn't have Rhaenyra, he went after the next best thing now that he was single. Corlys Valerion's daughter, Lena, who was Lenor's older sister. She had a betrothed that was a former rich kid from Bravos that spent all his gold, so the marriage kept getting delayed. Damon antagonized him long enough for the dummy to challenge the very dangerous prince to a duel, a seasoned fighter who had a Valyrian steel sword. Obviously Damon won, and he and Lena were free to marry ASAP. The next year, their twin girls, Rena and Bela, came to the world. In 117, Rhaenyra's last child she would have with Lena would be born, another son named Joffrey Valerion. Damon also returned to court and was forgiven once again. 
120 AC was a big year, referred to as the year of the Red Spring. Both of Corlys' children, Lena and Lenor, died. Lena due to childbirth complications, and Lenor killed at a fair by his suspected lover. Throughout their marriage, rumors were spreading that none of Rhaenyra's sons were actually fathered by Lenor because of his sexuality. None of the three boys had the Targaryen or Valerian iconic look. You know, the silver gold hair, purple eyes, and almost inhuman beauty. Instead, they're described as plain with brown hair and brown eyes. It was clear the father was Rhaenyra's sworn sword, the son of the Lord of Harrenhal. The rumored lover was forced to return home by Viserys, in hopes to bring an end to the rumors. Well, in Harrenhal, a mysterious fire took his life. The hand that replaced Otto Hightower also died in this fire. So Otto was asked by the forgiving Viserys to return to Kor and take up his old position. As if nothing happened to Rhaenyra or Daemon's spouses and lovers, they had a secret marriage before King Viserys could protest. And in the same year, their first son Aegon was born, matching Queen Alicent's firstborn son's name. Alicent's secondborn son, Aemon, had yet to claim a dragon by this point in the story, understandable since he was only 10. To prove his courage, he attempted to tame by far the largest living dragon, Vhagar, ridden by Aegon the Conqueror's sister during their conquest. He had to do this in secret, knowing his parents wouldn't approve of this dangerous risk. But he succeeded at a high cost. I probably shouldn't go into the details here, since it has to be adapted in House of the Dragon. A moment that'll divide the greens and blacks even further. Aside from less normal marriages and more Targaryens being born, little would happen until the Dance of the Dragon begins in 129 AC. But more Targaryens crowding up succession with their own personal weapons of mass destruction is never a good thing. The last thing I'll mention is the incident with Vaemon Valerion in 127 AC. I wasn't sure if he would make the cut for the prequel, so I checked the official cast list and lucky for us he made the script. So I guess little to nothing will be excluded if they're still aiming for 5 seasons. Vaemon is one of Corlys Valerion's nephews, and he tried to make a claim for House Valerion's seat when Corlys finally does die. His reasoning being, Corlys' grandsons are already in line for the Iron Throne and they might not even be true Valerions if the rumors about Rhaenyra are true. A very touchy subject for King Viserys. Rhaenyra told Daemon to bring him to her, and then asked her husband to remove his head for those words, and fed his corpse to her dragon Serax. When other Valerions lower on the totem pole spoke out using those same rumors as evidence, Viserys in turn had all five of their tongues removed creating a name for them, the Silent Five. I should make a dedicated video about this later on, after the show airs, cause things only get juicier here. And now we've made it to 129 AC. King Viserys' health had been declining over the past year, and now he was dead. He thought he solved any future succession issues long before his death, but he was naive and things never go that smoothly in this world. Thus starting a two year civil war between the family and their black and green supporters called the Dance of the Dragons. I can't even do the source material justice with this quick simplified timeline, but I think it should give you some much dated context cause there will be a lot of time jumps unlike Game of Thrones, where the showrunners had a bias towards flashbacks for years until like season 5. If flashbacks aren't a tool used in House of the Dragon, it'll be time jumps, starting with a 7 year old princess to a 32 year old queen. Thanks for watching guys.